A former Democratic congressman has been indicted on charges of ballot stuffing, bribery and obstruction in what is turning out to be a major voter fraud scandal. It was only a couple months ago we learned that a judge had been accepting bribes to ring up vote totals. I don't know if it's exactly the same thing as ballot stuffing. It sounds like the same thing, but the DOJ is not using that terminology. They're saying he was ringing up vote totals, basically going into voting machines and adding fraudulent votes. Now, this individual, Michael J. Ozzy Myers, is being accused of conspiring with this judge, and we'll get into the finer details. But as it turns out, there's actually another story about a GOP congressman accused of voter fraud. But there's a reason why I'm leading with the Democrats on this one. For one, by all means, call me biased. Most of my criticisms and complaints do go in the direction of the Democrats, but I think it is warranted. In the case of this GOP congressman, he's being accused of using a UPS store address for voting and voting in the wrong place. It's very different from accepting bribes and fraudulently voting, making fake votes and stuffing ballots so that you can win. But more importantly, it is typically the Democrats and the left arguing voter fraud ain't a thing. But here it is perpetrated by Democrats. And don't get me wrong, there have absolutely been Republicans that have been caught in serious voter fraud scandals, but it's the Democrats claiming it's not a thing when it really is. The Heritage Foundation has a tracker of like over a thousand convictions related to voter fraud. The big question, however, widespread voter fraud. Are there going to be millions of illegal votes? Well, that we don't have any evidence of. However, It's Democrats as well who are pushing for widespread nationwide mail-in voting, which is fairly broken. I mean, the stories have been popping up left and right. The most notorious, Patterson, New Jersey, where 20% of the vote was disqualified. Yeah, leading to a local NAACP leader saying cancel the whole election. We're hearing that nationwide, 65,000 votes have been disqualified because of postal service errors, failure failure to deliver. In California, 100,000 ballots weren't counted just because they either had poor matching signatures or there was just some weird technical issue with them. When it comes to mail-in voting, there are very serious problems and don't take my word for it. I have a story from 2012 from the New York Times saying exactly this, an increase in mail-in votes results in error and votes not being counted. That is the Democrats pushing for this. But of course, turn to the media and what do you get? Republicans are going to cheat. They're cheating now. Heaven forbid Donald Trump actually convinces people that mail-in voting is broken. Don't listen to Donald Trump. When Donald Trump says mail-in voting is going to be a big scandal, it's going to be awful. No, 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 don't listen to him. I mean, you're allowed to, sure. What I'm saying is, I'm going to give you the New York Times. So when they come to you and say, Donald Trump is wrong, mail-in voting is fine. Okay, then take it up with the New York Times who said, nah, uh, and I'm going to pull that up for you. But of course, you still have conservatives in mainstream media saying the Democrats are going to be cheating. They're going to be cheating. And here's how they're doing it with mail-in voting. Maybe. Maybe. I mean, look, uh, voter fraud can go in any direction. Sometimes people want to cheat to win. But I do believe we have a very serious problem with November, and that is both sides accusing each other of cheating, both sides in various forms being caught cheating in certain ways, not like at the highest levels, mind you, but that the dramatic increase in mail-in voting is going to be absolute chaos and no one is going to trust the results. Now, I can't predict the future, I have made some predictions. Sometimes I'm right. Sometimes I'm not. But let's read about what happened with this this former Democrat congressman, this GOP congressman being accused. And I'm going to show you exactly why people don't trust mail-in voting. And guess what? Around half of this country does not trust it. You know why? When people mail, when people vote by mail, they have no help. When you go to a polling station and say, what do I do? They can tell you what to do. But many first time voters, younger voters and minority voters have their votes disqualified because they're not familiar with how to do it. Blame that one on the Democrats. Let's read this story. But before we do, head over to TimCast.com slash donate if you'd like to support my work. There's many ways you can give, but the best thing that you can do, subscribe. Yeah, uh, surprisingly, half the people who consistently watch my content aren't subscribed. So you should subscribe because that would really, really help out the channel. And you'll also be making sure, well, you're increasing the likelihood that YouTube actually lets you know my videos exist. So if you do want to watch my videos every day at 4 p.m., 
Hit the subscribe button, the like button, the, the notification bell. Let's read the news. From CBS Philly, feds accuse ex-Philly Congressman Michael J. Ozzie Myers of stuffing ballots. They say, a federal grand jury indicted a disgraced former Pennsylvania congressman accusing the well-connected Philadelphia Democrat of election fraud during primary elections in 2014, 15, and 16. The indictment charges U.S. Rep. Michael Myers expelled from Congress after he was caught taking bribes in the abscam sting in the 1970s with paying cash to an elections judge to fabricate votes for his clients. And there it is. In 2014, 15 and 16, a Democrat was buying votes from an election judge. Now, come on, man. That is the voter fraud we are scared about. Now, of course, Trump talks about the federal level. The local level is so much easier to defraud. It's terrifying. In some elections, one of the elections, apparently a guy won by like 16 votes. Yep. You want to buy. So, so what? How many votes did he buy? for three years. And he's probably been doing it a lot longer. He only got caught in these three years. Now, the man's 77, mind you. He's accused of election fraud, conspiracy, and obstruction in the indictment, which was issued Tuesday and made public on Thursday. Myers did not appear to have a listed phone number and no lawyer was listed for him in the online court docket. Jurors charged that Myers gave cash to elections judge Dominic J. DeMuro, who awaits sentencing after pleading guilty earlier this year to conspiracy to deprive voters of their civil rights and other violations. In return, the juror said DeMuro added fake votes to the total for Myers campaign consultancy clients who were not identified in the indictment. I wonder how long until the DOJ, Barr, or anybody goes after those clients who surely must have known they were buying votes. Now, maybe not. Maybe this guy just said, trust me, if you hire me, I can make sure you win with great campaign work. And they had no idea the actual trick was just to go and buy votes. Quote, you are uh, well, actually U.S. Uh, attorney William M. McSwain said in a statement Thursday that the ballot stuffing also occurred for other candidates for federal, state and local offices. Quote, if only one vote has been illegally rung up or fraudulently stuffed into a ballot box, the integrity of that entire election is undermined. Votes are not things to be purchased and democracy is not for sale. They go on to talk about how he was caught in this abscam scandal going way back in time and he was expelled from Congress in 1980. But I'm not super concerned moving forward. The fact is the Democrat, he did it. He was campaigning for people. He was taking, he was giving bribes apparently. And we have a statement from the DOJ, but we have this from back in May, May 21st to give you an ex a better understanding of exactly what this guy was accused of doing. Now, this has to do with Dominic J. DeMuro, who uh, pleaded guilty during a sealed proceeding March 16th, 2020. They say that he was conspiring to deprive persons of civil rights and using interstate facilities to aid of bribery. The court unsealed the matter today. This is May 21st. Sentencing is scheduled for June 30th. I believe it's been postponed. They go on to mention that he was essentially ringing up ballots. That's what, that, that's what they call it. Here's a quote. The defendant abused his office by engaging in election fraud for profit, says Assistant Attorney General Brian A. Bankowski, Bankowski of the Justice Department's Criminal Division. Today's conviction makes it clear that the Department of Justice will do all in its power to protect the integrity of elections and maintain public confidence in all levels of elected government. There it is. The defendant abused his office engaging in election fraud for profit. It happens. Is it millions of votes? Not saying that, but it does happen. So when Democrats keep trying to push this claim, it doesn't happen. No, you're losing that argument because it does. And this is fairly serious, affecting federal, state and local elections. Now, of course, it can affect Republicans. Republicans do this, too. And there are many stories about Republicans doing it as well. This story is from only about a week ago. So, yes, it's happening across the board. But I think it's fair to point out the story of Congressman Steve Watkins is a bit different. And when it comes to Watkins, he's actually accusing them of politicizing this and trying to stop his reelection. They say U.S. Rep. Steve Watkins has been charged with four crimes, including three felonies linked to his allegedly repeatedly signing documents last year using a UPS store in Topeka as his home address. Republican Shawnee County District Attorney Mike Kagay announced Tuesday he had filed the charges which are linked to the November 2019 general election in which Watkins cast an advanced ballot but wasn't a candidate. 
Kage, said he charged Watkins 43 with one felony count, each of voting without being qualified, unlawful advance voting and interference with law enforcement involving providing false information, and a misdemeanor count of failing to notify the Department of Voter Vehicles of a change of address. Wait, what? He's being charged with not changing his address to the DMV? Yikes, everybody. Don't forget, if you move, you got to change your address. But it does seem a little over the top for a guy who just used a bunk address to vote. Now, I'm not saying he didn't do anything wrong. I'm just saying, wow, it's a hefty load of charges. Watkins maintained his innocence late Tuesday regarding the charges, calling them hyper political and very suspicious. The charges were filed as Watkins prepares to run in the August 4th primary election against two fellow Republicans, Dennis Taylor and Jake Letourneau, for their party's nomination for the second congressional district. Watkins has held it since January 2019. The charges were filed after an investigation conducted by the Shawnee County Sheriff's Office. Those charges, quote, are reflective of the factual allegations that were discovered by detectives during the course of this investigation. I'm going to stop right there. Maybe he's guilty, maybe he's not. Same is true for the other uh, former Democrat. However, the guy he was accused of conspiring with has pleaded guilty. I guess that's the best we can go off of. The guy pleaded guilty. I mean, it doesn't necessarily mean he literally did it, but he pled guilty. So I'm going to go ahead and assume, yeah, it's probably the case. As for this guy, he's maintaining his innocence and he's being accused of using a a, a bad address to vote. I guess it's not nearly as serious, but he's also running for re-election. Whether you think this guy did wrong or not, this is a very important story in the whole voter fraud news cycle, I guess. We'll put it that way. The reason is I'm willing to bet Republicans aren't going to believe this guy actually did anything wrong. And it's a political attack so that he doesn't win his reelection. I'm not saying that's true. I'm just saying in this tribal era, that's very likely what I think. I think tons of people are going to believe it. Like he's saying it's hyper political. They're coming after me trying to stop my reelection. Meanwhile, you have actual Democrats caught in a major voter scan, a vo- voter fraud scandal. But I want to show you something to, to, to the bigger issue in, in, in my opinion with this whole news cycle is not necessarily just voter fraud, but I highlight these stories because it does show it can affect both sides, you know, sure, fine. But some people will think it's political. The bigger issue is voter integrity. Will our ballots function properly? And I believe the answer is going to be, unfortunately, no. They say Donald Trump is lying about voter fraud. Don't believe it. Well, I just showed you a couple stories. Voter fraud does happen. Maybe not as widespread as people might assume. But when Donald Trump calls out mail-in voting on this count, I would go ahead and say he is 100% correct. Because Donald Trump wasn't the president, nor was he running back in 2012 when the New York Times published this story. October 6, 2012. Error and fraud at issue as absentee voting rises. You're going to love this. This story, I love it. On the morning of the primary here in August, the local elections board met to decide which absentee ballots to count. It was not an easy job. I kid you not. When it comes to mail-in votes, they literally say, does this vote count? No. And they throw it in the gutter. Figurative gutter. But yes, they quite literally be like, this one counts, this one doesn't. Well, you don't have an election if that's the case, I guess, right? It's been happening for a long time. The board tossed out some ballots because they arrived without the signature required on the outside of the return envelope. And a lot of people don't know you need to do that. It rejected one that said see inside where the signature should have been. And it debated what to do with ballots in which the signature on the envelope did not quite match the one in the county's files on the outside of the return envelope. How many people want to have their their signature just visible for anybody and just drop it off some, in some random place? I bet not a lot. That's what you got to do, though. A lot of people don't know that. Ion Sancho, the election supervisor here, disagreed. Oh, and they're talking about letters. They're like, this R does not look like that R, they say, and they suggested a ballot should be rejected. Scenes like this will play out in many elections next month because Florida and other states are swiftly moving from voting at a polling place towards voting by mail. In the last general election in Florida in 2010, 23% of voters cast absentee ballots, up from 15% in the midterm election four years before. Nationwide, the use of absentee ballots and other forms of voting by mail has more than tripled since 1980 and now accounts for almost 20% of votes. Here we go. You ready for this? Yet votes cast by mail are less likely to be counted, more likely to be compromised and more likely to be contested than those cast in a voting booth. Statistics show. 
election officials reject almost 2% of ballots cast by mail, double the rate for in-person voting. Mic drop, please. Stop saying Trump is wrong. Okay, okay, hold on. You see, Trump also claimed that there's going to be counterfeit ballots and the counterfeit ballots are going to change the elections. Maybe that was a little over the top. Maybe I would have agreed with that uh, until Joe Biden himself said he has been briefed and Russia and China are trying to or are, are actively interfering in our current election. Okay, then. So is Donald Trump correct? Foreign interference is literally happening. Maybe not literal counterfeit ballots. But what about this? When Trump says it's going to be awful, and he just said it the other day, there's going to be tons of problems, a great scandal, election fraud, whatever. Well, election fraud exists. There's charges right now. And now we can see that New York Times was calling this out. Why did they stop? Why now, New York Times, do you not come out and say, you know, Trump's actually right about this. We've covered it. It's because the New York Times has gone through a dramatic shift. I mean, literally, <laughs> as I'm reading this story from 2012, there is a recommendation for white fragility in the editor's picks. So, uh, yeah, I think we can see there's been a shift at the paper. But of course, the orange man bad narrative persists. And that's the real name of the game over at ABC. As of just a couple days ago, tr uh, they say, I don't trust it. Is Trump's false rhetoric on vote by mail resonating? 49% of Americans believe mail-in voting is susceptible to significant fraud. I've had enough of this. If Donald Trump reads a newspaper and then says this will happen, Based on the newspaper, you can't say it's false rhetoric, but that's what they do. Welcome to 2020. I know I say it a lot, but this is the absurdity of our modern elections. 49% don't believe it. Trump's false rhetoric. Here's what the ABC writes. President Donald Trump's crusade against vote by mail laced with false criticisms of the primary alternative amid the coronavirus pandemic appears to be resonating with some voters across the country as nearly half are convinced mail-in voting is susceptible to significant fraud. Fine. Call me wrong. Say, Tim, this is you, Trump is wrong. You're 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 biased. You're wrong. And, and ABC says so. Then take it up with the New York Times. It's right here. It's the New York Times. It's not Trump. They are changing their perspective because whatever Trump says, he must be wrong. Overall, they say, majority favor in-person voting, while over a third of Americans said the preference is to vote by mail. In the last presidential election, 24% of voters casted ballots by mail in 2016. When you vote by mail, you don't know if your vote has been counted. And you have to, I believe you can check up to make sure it's registered, it's gone through. And many people have complained their votes haven't counted. It has literally happened in Patterson, New Jersey. I mean, you know what? Let me just show you. New Jersey's all male vote debacle is a warning for November. Let me read you this. They say Patterson, the Garden State's third largest city, is mired in a burgeoning election scandal. One in five ballots has been rejected. 20 percent. The local NAACP has cried foul. And now four men including a councilman and councilman elect, have been charged by the state's attorney general with criminal election fraud. How is Trump wrong? I can't believe the media is consistently running with this narrative. OK, 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 the media. Real Clear Politics obviously is doing an OK job pointing out this news. And of course, local news outlets are reporting on this. So let me clarify what I mean by that. Major newspapers like The New York Times, outlets like ABC, top politicos and pundits in media are nothing more than democratic political operatives lying about what's going on. Here we can see from these from this local reporting that journalism, it exists. I mean, look, I say journalism is dead because the New York Times, the gray lady, the paper of record has fallen quite a bit. And we're not and we're getting inundated with propaganda, especially with what's coming out of Portland. But we do still have some really good journalism. You've got local reporting from, you know, uh, Patterson, New Jersey, just pointing out that, hey, there's fraud. You know, that people are being charged. There was a story about the McCloskeys, the, the, the couple who were armed in St. Louis. And we learned from a local news outlet that the state had manipulated evidence to try and falsely frame them. That's from local reporting. So I definitely respect the good journalists who are still doing their jobs. But here we can see 
It's gonna get bad in November. So who's to blame for this? Listen, the reason why I frame this video with Democrats is because I truly believe they are the chaotic destructive force and Republicans for the most part are yeah, do nothings. I, I really do think they're do nothings. They, they sit around, they do very little. And I believe the Republican establishment is absolutely horrible. And I believe there's a bunch of really awful Republican politicians who probably need to be voted out. That's 100% true. The Democrats, however, are playing a whole different game of chaotic destruction. They're joining violent riots. They're praising them. They're protecting them. They're encouraging mail-in vote, even though we have story after story about the chaos, even though eight years ago, the New York Times said, hey, there's going to be a whole lot of problems. The Democrats still insist on doing this. And because we just had a DOJ indictment for former Democrats bribing a judge to stuff ballots, I kind of feel like that paints a negative picture of the Democrats. But listen, I get it. I showed you that Republican on purpose. I don't think the Republicans are good either. I think the easiest way to break down the math on this one is that when Donald Trump tried pulling troops out of Afghanistan, you had eight Republicans and three Democrats agree with him. The whole system is rotten. Don't get me wrong. There's slightly more Republicans who are kind of voting in the right way, though, in my opinion. There have been a few, a few votes I think the Democrats had, have gotten right. But for the most part, at this point, all of this is insane. The Democrats are the ones who have cheered for this, who have called for this, and it is chaos, and they should know better. At the very least, I think they are completely inept. Republicans were the ones who called out Russiagate. Republicans were the ones who said that Ukraine gate was nonsense. They were right about all of that. They're the ones who said mail-in voting is going to be bad. Trump is the one saying it's going to be bad, yet they still blame Trump, arguing it is in fact the Republicans Look at this. Republicans are right. Election fraud is real. They are perpetrating it. How about this from Rolling Stone? The plot against America. The GOP's plan to suppress the vote and sabotage the election. Blocking ballots, intimidating voters, spreading us information, undermining democracy is at the heart of Trump's 2020 campaign. Yeah. And we also, to be fair, we get this. Voter fraud is real. Here's how Democrats want to steal the election from Newt Gingrich. So I get it, man. Both sides are pointing the fingers. But I'll tell you what, all that really matters to me. Why is it once again, Tim, putting out a video saying the Democrats are wrong on this one? It's because they are. Mail-in voting is going to be a nightmare, an absolute catastrophe. And Trump said it would. When Trump said there was going to be foreign interference in the election with mail-in ballots, he was mocked and ridiculed. They said, Trump's lying, Trump's exaggerating. And then Joe Biden himself came out and said, I've been briefed. Yep, he's right. Not, not literally, he said that Russia and China are interfering in the election. That's what the intelligence says. So maybe Trump can often be a bit hyperbolic, maybe exaggerates a little bit. But, he, but he's right. When he criticizes mail-in voting, he's right. And now here's what we get from left-wing publications. ProPublica says how voter fraud hysteria and partisan bickering ate election oversight. Oh, it's the hysteria from Trump. That's what's causing the uh, uh, <laughs> the failed oversight. You know what, man? I think come November, we can see a few things at polling locations across the country. I wouldn't be surprised if left wing groups show up to like protect the ballot from from fraud and right-wing groups show up to protect the ballots from fraud, and then they fight. I won't be surprised if we find out about thousands or hundreds of thousands of disqualified votes. And like we saw with Patterson, one in five being discounted. Do you think if Donald Trump lose, loses by a few thousand votes in one swing state, that he's going to be like, well, I lost? No, he's going to say, hey, those votes are there. Those votes count. You can't disqualify those votes. The Democrats are going to be like, no, those votes don't match. Those are bad votes. Those, those votes are disqualified. They didn't sign them. Supreme Court time. And do you think it will end peacefully and calmly? There's going to be fighting in the streets. There's going to be uh, miscounted ballots, ballots being rejected. It's going to go on for, for a month or longer. And then like some, uh, some writers for, New for Newsweek had written, what will happen? Many people have speculated this. If it's not, if the electoral count isn't completed by December 14th, the Supreme Court will kick it to state delegations in the House of Representatives, of which I believe there are 50 and the Republicans have the majority giving Trump the victory. 
I guess we can only wait and see. Next segment's coming up at 6 p.m. over at youtube.com slash timcastnews. Thanks for hanging out, and I will see you all then.